in this video I am going to be turning this wood cutting bandsaw into a metal cutting bandsaw. Um, this is a Delta Milwaukee Homecraft 10 inch bandsaw and I I don't wasn't looking for a metal cutting bandsaw or really this project at all but uh, I saw saw this bandsaw on auction and I think it was like fifteen dollars and it looked cool to me I like the round curved you know old school looking tools and I thought it might be fun to, to try to turn this thing from a wood cutting bandsaw into a metal cutting bandsaw um, so I was just checking it out um, seeing if it if the motor worked if everything was turning um, and now I'm starting to get into the disassembly Most of this comes apart super easy. Um, I don't think this was ever, this wasn't a tool that was babied, but it wasn't beat up either, so um, nothing looked overly abused. Um, the previous owner, prior to the auction house, they had taken and put, in, put a, uh, a spacer below the upper um, I don't know what you call it, the, the wheel, what the wheel mounts to, which does the tracking and the tension. Um, they put a spacer on and drilled a couple hole, extra holes in the cover to clear, clear the wheel. Um, but other than that, it looked like everything was in pretty good shape. Um, so here I'm uh, just taking the rest of that cast iron face off and then looking for how, how am I going to take this this motor off and this is uh, a homemade uh, pretty obviously a homemade stand uh, which was working it was kind of wobbly I don't know if you could tell in the video when I turned that thing on um, it actually wobbled quite a bit I, and I turned it on here I was curious if it was the bearings in this motor or maybe it was just the belt you know because belts after they sit for a while kind of take the set and they can add a vibration uh, here I'm taking off the uh, the bandsaw wheels and pulley. There was a nut on that shaft, and I thought maybe it would just pop out, and it doesn't. Um, so can't really see the set screws and things. Uh, so I decided to take this table off, and then I'd have a better look at the wheels. Um, and this was just a on with uh, the, I believe there's a wood drift key under that but there was just a, a set screw on set screw holding that pulley on and there's like a stop collar between that pulley and that bearing hub um, so I just loosen both those up and it was a little bit tighter than hand tied so I ended up getting a screwdriver and a little bit of pry bar and prying them off but they pried off super easy Just cleaning up that shaft so I can get the rest of that that, that stop collar off. And then that whole shaft comes out. I, I never did take it that shaft off that pulley, you know, once I got it that far. Um it seemed like what's the point then? You know, I cleaned it up just fine the way it is. Inside that bearing housing, it just bronze bushings, and there's an oiler to oil them. And then now I'm vacuuming everything up. Um, this is the top wheel here, uh, and there's two needle bearings inside that. So, which I, I just use in a socket in a a little extension. Maybe just a socket, but um, popping that out with a, a socket that fits pretty pretty neatly in that hole. Um, 
the way that wheel was sitting on my my wood vise there wasn't very straight so I decided just to get another socket would fit outside the OD of that needle bearing and then I'm popping it through into that socket now just so you know because you got to have something holding up the wheel but not in the way of the bearing so socket socket's pretty handy for that uh, so one of them's out in here I'm popping up the other one now because like I said there's two and those needle bearings were a little bit gum, gummed up, but weren't too bad. Um, so instead of reusing that wood stand, I built this metal stand, which I, I didn't record. But this, I just built this out of an old bed frame. Uh, maybe you can see those notches if you've ever taken a bed frame apart. You can recognize that, but that's all this is. Uh, bed frame, and I got a couple of pieces of mild steel angle iron. Um, and the reason I did that is bed frames are tougher than mild steel. I, I don't exactly know what they're made out of, some sort of spring steel or something, but they're tough to drill, tough tough on tools. So um, I cut all the pieces of the that stand with the grinder, and then I added the mild steel so it could drill. And, uh, and then you can see here I'm, I'm putting in some nut zerts. Um, which is like a rivet that's threaded, um, so you can put a bolt into it. Um, and just a second ago, you saw me pounding one of those nut certs in with a hammer, which ended up being a mistake. It deformed it, and then I couldn't get the bolt in, and then I ended up having to take that out. And I'm pretty new to this whole nut cert thing, so I'm not real sure on where I should set that and how much tension, and so I'm kind of getting used to that with this project. Um, so here's that one that I beat in. I'm trying to pry it out. Um, then I here I'm trying to tap it out. I'm, this, I, this is not working at all. So I uh, ended up getting, uh, my slide hammer's got a vice grip attachment for it. So put a vice grip on the slide hammer and then it, then it popped right out. And then drilled the hole out a little bit bigger and then it worked just fine. Um, here I'm putting some casters on. I got, I'm putting two locking casters and two non-locking casters. I was a little hesitant about this because I don't want my bandsaw rolling around when I'm cutting steel. Um, so I don't know if this is a good choice or not, but I figured I could always go in and change those leveling feet or add some, some stops later if I needed to. Um, this is what I have been using, this Milwaukee port band Before that, I had a Harbor Freight port uh, And it works good, but, you know, it's it's not that big, and sometimes the throat, the angle of the throat on that thing can be in the way. Um, so what I'm doing is I have a gear reduction box that I'm mounting, going to mount to this thing, and um, so I just cut some pieces of all thread, three-eighths all thread, um, and then ground a little chamfer on the ends of the all thread to make it thread easier and then there's that. This is a 30 to 1 gear reduction box that I'm putting on here. I got this, uh, it was a walk-in freezer door, like a huge walk-in freezer door. I don't, I don't remember exactly the size but it was like 12 feet tall and uh, probably nine or ten feet wide and there was this big door opener and that's what this was. Um, this used to have a, a, a chain instead of that pulley on there. That's a new pulley I, I just bought but um, that's what this motor and, and gear reduction box what I got what, what they were for when I got it. Uh, inside that huge door was a small man door which I planned on converting one of my sheds to a walk-in cooler um, at some point so I still have some of that stuff um, and then here uh, I just got a you know, steel square tubing I was pounding that pulley on to get it in, in more in alignment and then now for reassembly so you can see everything's painted and clean all I did was wire wheel all the dirty parts, and I, and I have a, 
an ultrasonic cleaner also. So I took some degreaser and put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and all the little bits that would fit. I cleaned it with that first and then I wire reeled them too. And um, that turned out pretty nice. And so now I just hear reassembly. Uh, I got the tires for the bandsaw on Amazon and they were a tiny bit wide so I had to cut them with the, just a utility knife. Uh, but they're urethane, orange urethane tires for the bandsaw wheels. Um, here, putting that tracking mechanism back together, tracking slash tensioning mechanism back together. Uh, and then here's the lower one. That's a, that's, that, what you see me spray just a second ago was a, a white lithium grease. Anyway, putting this back together. Um, Putting the nuts back on. And then the pulley. You can see, uh, maybe if you noticed, uh, maybe you didn't, but the one that was on there originally, that's the one that, the pulley that was off the motor. Uh, I needed a smaller pulley to be the driven one because it's such a, the, because of the gear reduction. I had taken the speed, and I don't recall now what it was, um, before I took this all apart, and then did the math with the gear reduction unit that I have, because it's stamped on one of the tags on it, what the, the reduction was. And uh, I knew the pulleys that I had uh, weren't gonna work, so I ordered another one, and then the drive pulley from the wood band side turned into the driven pulley. A uh, little bit of, you know, did a little bit of math for that, and, and this seemed to, to work just fine. Uh, so here, just putting on the, the table, um, that handle, you know, you just lift it up into that, uh, the other piece that's on there, and you, then you can tighten and loosen. So that's intentionally loose. And then putting the belt back on, and then I'm going to adjust it. Um, I, you only see me doing this for a couple seconds here, but it uh, probably took me a few minutes to get this thing adjusted right. And then I tried cutting a little bit of steel, and it was still loose. And so then I adjusted it again. The whole thing probably took me, I don't know, seven or ten minutes. I, I wasn't wasn't timing the whole thing, but uh, and then here trying to put the bandsaw. Um, the blade guide's on, and I thought it'd be easier to put that on, the table off, so I took the table back off. Uh, so there's the blade guides there. And then fitting that blade for the first time. And the original tracking bolt was a like a wing nut style bolt, um, and it was all bent, so I just put a quarter 20 bolt in there. Planning on making a knob for that later on, but I just wanted to get this done, so I haven't done it yet. Anyway, that all seemed to work pretty good. Um, and then I figured probably what made sense is to check the speed on this thing. So uh, for this project, I bought a tachometer that would also read, uh, Tesla tachometers read RPMs, but this also reads um, linear speeds. So uh, what I'm measuring it here is meters per minute. If I can get the camera focused right. So there's just a little contact wheel. And then there's a display. I'll zoom down here in just a sec. And you can see I'm kind of bouncing between like 90 and 92 meters per minute. So um, just did a little bit of math and 91 meters per, per minute is 298, 299 feet per minute, um, which, you know, I did some searching on the internet and that looks like it's a pretty good range for, um, uh, for, for cutting steel, which is my intention here. So a bunch of wire uh, sticking out of there. I'm, that's the knockout. I just knocked out of that electrical box. And then I'm putting in a plug where the old cord went through. Um, 
And then I like this style of um, motor switch, tool switch. Um, I typically I just buy these on Amazon. Um, and they're cheap, they're like four or five bucks for a switch. So I, this is just a, a blank plate for, I think I got the box and plate at Lowe's. And then this is a rotary tool, flex tool, flex shaft tool. Um, that particular one is made by a company called Grow Bay. Um, and I'm just cutting a hole out for the switch. Um, you don't need that. You, I, you know, the last few I've done were with a Dremel, but you could probably do that with a, you know, a keyhole saw or something like that too. But that fit pretty good. So I'm going to go put that switch on the bandsaw. Um, so you can see the, the single getting electrical box here. What you can't see in between there is a piece of hard conduit. It, it's essentially just a, a half inch nipple with some um, conduit nuts on it in between. Um, so that's a hard steel connection between those metal boxes. Um, this motor is designed to be run in two different directions because like I said it was for that door. Um, so, and it can also be ran at, I think, 115 or 230 volts. So there's some extra wires in there that I'm not using because I'm only using this in one direction and only in 115 volts. So uh, cleaning up some of the wiring and then see how loose that box is and try and tighten it down. It's, I finally get sick of messing with this and get some channel locks and actually get it tight. Um, there's a ground lug in that box, which is where I'm hooking the ground up, and then these paddle switches are going to just interrupt the hot leg, and then the neutral I have wired wire nutted together. Finally, get that box tight, and then here I'm wiring up the uh, that switch. Get that wired up, and then I can button up all the boxes, and then the electrical is good to go. So the blade's on, blade guards are on. Uh, here now, just put the covers on. And those are just held on by those, those just knurled knots. In there. You can see here, those extra holes I was talking about, the, the previous owner drilled in there to, I'm assuming he had longer bands on blades. Uh, anyway, just putting the badge back on. Um, this is the one that says Delta Milwaukee Home Craft, and uh, I need a little, tiny bit bigger holes to, to rivet it back on. Um, but that's all I'm doing here is riveting that badge back on, and I think it's finished at this point. So pretty happy with the the, the colors and the way it turned out. Everything's I mean, looking sharp and nice and quiet and run smooth and then here just testing it out for the first time seems like didn't have those wheels locked in but I don't think the wheels are going to be a problem the casters are going to be a problem so just cut pretty nice and pretty pleased with the project Anyway, appreciate you sticking around for the whole video, and if you haven't, uh, hit the subscribe button. appreciate you doing that, and hit like if you like the video. Thanks for watching.